Hello everyone. In this video, I will discuss about various types of PCR that is polymerase chain reaction. So without any delay, let's start the video. So guys, these are those types of PCR which I'm going to discuss like hot start PCR, colony PCR, multiplex, nested, asymmetric, touchdown PCR, reverse transcriptase PCR and real time PCR. So be with me till the end of this video and you will learn a lot about these different types of PCR. So before directly going into the types of PCR, let me first recall you that what is PCR. So as you know, PCR is a technique by which we can make many copies of our DNA fragments or simply you can say we can amplify our DNA fragments and these are the basic step of a PCR cycle like first is denaturation in which the target template DNA opens up. The second step is annealing in which the primers they are annealed with the different strands of these separated strands and final step that is extension in which DNA polymerase that is TAC DNA polymerase it extends these primers and ultimately make the new strands. So these three that is denaturation, annealing and extension. So these three are the main steps of a PCR cycle. So now as you know PCR and the steps of PCR. Now let's move to the various types of PCR. Do remember these three steps which are common in all types of PCR. So start with the first type that is hot start PCR. Here the name indicating hot start means we just heat up the PCR then start means simply you can uh, get the idea from the this uh, title that is hot start. So what exactly the hot start PCR? So just uh, imagine that when we add the TAC polymerase in the beginning in PCR mixture and the first step as you know is the denaturation which usually done at the 94 degree and the TAC polymerase it act at the 72 degree. As the temperature rises it will you can say rise from 72 to 94 but as we know the TAC polymerase can act at the 72 degree centigrade. So as the temperature reached at the 72 so TAC polymerase start acting before the denaturation step. So that's why in this hot start PCR, we simply inhibit the activation of this TAC polymerase before the denaturation step so that the denaturation step completely done after that this TAC polymerase gets activated. So how we do this or what is the procedure of this TAC polymerase will be covered in this next slide. So here is the animation about this hot start PCR. This is a PCR tube in which we have just added the target DNA, the DNTPs and buffer. Only missing is the TAC polymerase. Now, this is the TAC polymerase. So it is added at the lid of the PCR tube, not in the buffer mixture, but at the lid. How? Like we just add the wax barrier between this PCR mixture and the TAC polymerase so that the TAC polymerase is not directly added to the PCR mixture. So how we do this like in this animation we have the TAC polymerase attached to the lid and there is a wax barrier between the TAC polymerase and the PCR mixture. Now as we know this is the wax and wax they melt on heating so this is that wax which will melt as we add the additional heating step. So after heating as the wax melt or you can say dissolve now because now the denaturation step has been completed and we are adding the additional step for just dissolving the wax so that now this TAC polymerase can enter in this PCR mixture because the TAC polymerase is very much important for the PCR. So by this additional step now you can clearly see that the wax has been dissolved and the TAC polymerase is now just inoculated inside the PCR mixture and now it will carry the normal PCR which can be checked by the agrose gel electrophoresis. So this is about the hot start PCR means why we are saying hot start because we are heating the PCR mixture. After that the normal PCR cycle will start because the TAC polymerase is only added 
after the additional heating step so that's why it named as hot start means first just heat up to dissolve the wax then the pcr will be started because the talc polymerase will be added after the wax will be dissolved now the next type of pcr is colony pcr so here as the name again indicating colony so in this pcr we are directly performing the pcr of any bacterial cloning bacteriophage cloning or any yeast colony which carry the recombinant products so it is just used for the screening of recombinants from bacterial bacteriophage or yeast transformation products so how we perform the colony pcr so this is the steps of colony pcr here these as you know this represent the petri plate in which we have the transformation experiment means different colonies so here these are rounded white shape they represent the bacterial colonies so after transformation we know that some colonies will be transformed so these red color dots they represent the colonies that has been transformed by our you can say gene of interest now we are just cultured only these transformed colonies not the other ones just these transformed means which are here in the red color so we just culture only these transformed colonies so after culturing we will get you can say maximum of these transformed colonies now how we can analyze or screen our product in these colonies so for that we perform pcr so here again this is the autoclaved water in the pcr tube and now we just pick a single colony from this bacterial plate and just add this into the autoclaved water means we are just taking the colony so that's why the p colony pcr so now as we just inoculated the bacteria colony in the autoclaved water now we just denature it for 5 minute at 94 degree centigrade and as a result of denaturation now the dna product will be you can say it will comes in the autoclaved water due to denaturation now we can go for the pcr means now we are adding the talc polymerase as the purple one dntps and buffer means the complete pcr master mix and now we can go for the traditional pcr so this is the colony pcr in which we are just taking the any bacterial cloning and now we just denaturing the colony to get the target dna and after that we are performing the pcr so that's why the colony pcr so as this is the pcr master mixture and now it will go for the traditional pcr means it will be placed in the pcr machine and ultimately we can analyze the pcr product by the agros gel electrophoresis which will give us the bands and from the bands we can analyze our products now the third type of pcr multiplex pcr so here again the name indicating multiplex so you definitely know that these days we call the movie theater as multiplex why because in these movie theaters we can see more than one movies in the different screen means at a one time you may have 3 4 or 5 movies are released on the different screen in screen in the same building so that's why the name multiplex so same concept applies here in the multiplex pcr we can amplify more than one gene in a single pcr mixture or tube so definitely multiplex now it will be clear multiplex means in which we can amplify more than one fragment of dna in a one pcr tube or simply when we amplify several different dna sequences simultaneously and how we do so just to perform multiplex pcr we have to add the primers of different genes so we have to use the multiple primers now in this slide the process of P uh, multiplex pcr will be covered so here for example we have three sample that is sample a sample b and sample c so these are three dna samples which we want to amplify at once or simultaneously so how we can go for the multiplex pcr so this is again a pcr tube containing the pcr mixture like which have the talc polymerase and dntps and buffer now just add these samples in this pcr tube one by one 
and we have the primers for you can say different primer for the different sample like primer a for the sample a primer b for the sample b and primer c for the sample c because these primers are uh, sequence specific so that's why we have to use the specific primer for a specific sequence which we want to amplify so here we are taking the example of three sample that is a b c so that's why we have to use three primer primer a b and c so now as we have the complete pcr mixture now add the sample in the pcr tube one by one like first we are adding the sample a in the pcr tube after that we have to add the another sample that is here in the case sample b and now the next is the sample c so now we are taking only the example of three samples so you can perform more than three sample also but do remember you have to add the specific primer for each sample rest of the component will be same like tight polymerase dntps buffer they will remain the same but the primer should be separate for each dna segment to be amplified so now after adding all these mixture like the samples primers and other pcr mixture so now we can go for the traditional pcr so here just place this pcr into the your pcr machine and after that we have to check the you can say after placing them into the pcr machine we have to check the pcr product so that can be checked as you know by the agrose gel electrophoresis in which the different sequence will give the band at the different position now the next type of pcr is reverse transcriptase pcr sometimes also called as rt pcr here reverse transcriptase because we are using the enzyme reverse transcriptase but what is this reverse transcriptase pcr here now as you know we can amplify the dna but what about the rna if you want to amplify the rna by the pcr so can we amplify the rna so the answer is yes we can so by using this reverse transcriptase pcr technique we can also amplify the rna in the same pcr machine so how we can do this so for this first of all we have to convert in the first reaction we have to convert our rna into the cdna by using the enzyme that is reverse transcriptase so that's why the named as reverse transcriptase enzyme so firstly the rna will be converted into cdna that is complementary dna and in the second strand reaction this cdna will be amplified by the normal polymerase polymerase chain reaction that is pcr so reverse transcriptase pcr is simply the pcr of rna in which we have to amplify the rna in this slide the procedure of reverse transcriptase will be discussed so here this represent this red rod is represent the rna which we want to amplify and here at the three dash position you can clearly see poly a tail so first of all we have to convert this rna into cdna and for this we will use the enzyme reverse transcriptase but reverse transcriptase it require the primer to start the synthesis so that's why we can add the oligo dt primer means as we know complementary to adenine is thymine so we have to use oligo dt primer so that it will attach itself to the poly a tail of rna as the oligo dt primer is attached now we add the reverse transcriptase enzyme and it will uh, you can say extend or synthesize the new dna from this rna so now we have the rna cdna hybrid here the red road it represent the rna while this mustard color road it represent the cdna so as you clearly see now we have this hybrid after that the next step will be just to remove this rna molecule for that we will use the enzyme that is rnase h and it will specifically degrade the rna from this hybrid and now we only left with the complementary dna that is cdna the next step will be the pcr means now we can perform the pcr of this cdna so for this we use the primers as we know primers are necessary for the pcr and the top polymerase will amplify the primers and synthesize the 
new strands and finally after the cycles we will get the different pcr products so by this we can perform the pcr of rna or simply you can say we can amplify the rna by using reverse transcriptase pcr next type of pcr asymmetric pcr so here what means asymmetric means symmetry means when two or more things they are in the same order same pattern so that is known as symmetry but asymmetry means when the two or more things they are not in the same pattern or same quantity or same lining means by any way you can imagine asymmetry means when the two things they are not in accordance with each other they are differ from each other simple so here asymmetric pcr means when we amplify the one strand of original dna more than other strand means you know dna have the two strands and usually in the pcr we are amplifying both of the strand in equal quantity but in asymmetric pcr if we want to amplify only one strand of the dna more than the other strand so that pcr is known as asymmetric pcr so for this we have to use the primer in specific ratio means the strand which we want to amplify more so the primer of that strand should also be more than the primer of other strand generally we use the ratio of 100 is to 1 so after the 20 to 25 cycle the one primer will definitely exhausted it will be used up and now the pcr mixture we left only with the primer of one strand so ultimately now what will we get we will get the primer sorry we will get the only one strand amplified by the primer that are remained so the result ultimately as i told from with next 5 to 10 pcr we have only single strand generated so here again the procedure of asymmetric pcr so here this red color shape it represent the non targeted strand means which you do not want to amplify more and this green color shape it represent the targeted dna means that dna strand which you want to amplify more than the non targeted dna strand so these are the two strands of a same dna molecule but you just only want to amplify this green one not the red one so how will you perform the asymmetric pcr so first of all we have to add the primer so this uh, red arrow represent the primer for this red color strand that is non targeted so it is in a limited concentration and this blue arrows they represent the primers which are used for the you can say the amplification of the targeted dna which is in the green color so the concentration of these blue primers means the target dna strand specific primer is more than the non targeted uh, dna now what will happen after the pcr as you know the limited primer they will get exhausted and we will have only few non targeted dna strands that will be amplified because pcr primer will be exhausted but in case of targeted dna strand we have the abundant primer means we have the plenty of primer so that after the exhaustion of the primer for non targeted strand the pcr will continue for the target strand and we will get the more targeted strand amplification as compared to non target dna strand amplification so this is how we can perform the asymmetric pcr or what is the principle behind the asymmetric pcr now next type of pcr is nested pcr so this nested pcr is a simple a modification of pcr in which we just enhance the pcr reaction by preventing the non specific binding of primer non specific binding means the primer they may bind the position other than we want means if we want to bind them to a specific position but they may bind to some different positions so just to inhibit their binding to different locations we use this nested pcr and in this the basic principle that in this nested pcr the first the primer they will bound to the outer region of the target dna and after that we will use another set of primer they will bind to the specific target site so the procedure will be more clear to in the next slides so as i'm again saying the in the second round of amplification the second set of primer they amplify only the target dna so here the nested pcr this is the dna strand and the strand which is in the red color here it represent the target dna region means that region which you want to amplify and this orange region it is the outer region this orange or you can say this mustard color region it is the 
यू कैन से दिस वन दिस मस्टर्ड कलर रीजन इट इज द आउटर रीजन द रीजन आउटर फ्रॉम द टारगेट रीजन विच यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू एम्पलीफाई यू ओनली वॉन्ट टू एम्पलीफाई द टारगेट रीजन सो हेयर फर्स्ट वी एड द मीन्स फर्स्ट साइट ऑफ प्राइमर्स आर स्पेसिफिक फॉर द आउटर रीजन सो हेज यू कैन क्लियरली सी नाउ द प्राइमर हैज बीन एडिड सो आफ्टर द फर्स्ट राउंड ऑफ पी सी आर वट वी विल गेट वी विल गेट दिस प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज द प्राइमर वर स्पेसिफिक फॉर आउटर रीजन सो द आउटर रीजन विल ऑल्सो बी एम्पलीफाइड इन द पी सी आर प्रोडक्ट एज यू कैन क्लियरली सी बट वी ओनली वॉन्ट द दिस रेड रीजन सो फॉर दिस नाउ इन द सेकेंड राउंड ऑफ पी सी आर द सेकेंड सेट ऑफ पी सी आर विल बी यूज विच विल बी स्पेसिफिक फॉर दिस टारगेट रीजन एज यू कैन क्लियरली सी हेयर दिज रेड प्राइमर्स आर द स्पेसिफिक फॉर दिस यू कैन से दिस स्पेसिफिक रेड कलर टारगेट रीजन सो दीज प्राइमर्स आर कोल्ड एज नेस्टेड प्राइमर्स सो आफ्टर द सेकेंड राउंड ऑफ पी सी आर नाउ वट विल हैव वी वी हैव ओनली द टारगेट डी एन ए एम्पलीफाइड सो दिस इज द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द नेस्टेड पी सी आर मीन्स here just we use two set of primer first they will bind to the outer region of the target dna then in the second round more specific primer which will bind to the target dna strand so by this we will only have the amplification of target dna from the second round of pcr so this is the nested pcr next type of the pcr is touch down pcr so here as the name indicating touch down means we are something decreasing so what we are decreasing here we are decreasing the annealing temperature means from the name of the types of pcr you can also get the idea that what is going to be happen in that particular pcr so here touch down means something is going down so what is that that is the annealing temperature so here the basic principle of touch down pcr is that here v initially set the annealing temperature more than the optimum annealing temperature or melting temperature of primer and then we gradually decrease the annealing temperature step by step till it reach the optimum melting temperature so this is the initial denaturation step as you know in the practical purpose we add the initial denaturation step in the pcr after that this is the first cycle step that is denaturation which is at 95 degree centigrade after that there will be the annealing step and which we usually you can say which we usually done at 57 degree so here in the example so suppose if here the optimum melting temperature is 57 degree centigrade so first we will set the temperature that is you can say 66 and when the temperature will reach 57 after that the extension step will continue so how first the temperature is 65 after that temperature will down to 64 then it will again reduce to 63 degree 62 61 and ultimately decrease 1 degree and till it reach the optimum melting temperature or annealing temperature that is 57 degree centigrade once it reached the 57 degree centigrade then the extension step will proceed so this is the touch down pcr means in which we are not directly giving the optimum temperature we are just giving the temperature higher than the optimum temperature then the temperature is gradually reduced till it reach the optimum melting temperature so that's why the name touch down because we are just downing just make down this uh, annealing temperature gradually after that the next time the same step of the pcr pcr cycle will be repeated like denaturation again the annealing and then the extension so now the normal pcr will be continue so first 10 cycle we will go for this gradual decrease in the annealing temperature and after that we can go next cycle with the normal pcr cycle means normally just set the temperature 57 and go for the extension just for first 10 cycle or 10 to 15 cycle you can go for the this touch down pcr after that you will go for the normal pcr and lastly the as you know extension for the 10 minute for the complete extension of the product will be there and now we will stop the pcr and place the pcr at the 4 degree centigrade so that it will not get damaged due to the room temperature so this is all about this touch down pcr 
now the next and the most important or you can say the mostly used pcr in these days is a real time pcr which is also known by the different names like kinetic pcr q pcr means quantitative pcr q rt pcr and rt q pcr so all these are the name of this real time pcr so what is the real time pcr and how it is so important so here just focus on the name of this pcr to remember it real time so what do you mean by real time so real time is that when we can see something happening in the real time means when we can see the progress of something as the progress is you can say gradually increasing and we can also see that increasing progress or we can also see the event in the mean time so that we know as the real time so in this pcr we can see the progress of pcr cycle in the real time means we can see whether the pcr is going well or not whether the dna strands are amplifying or not so from the beginning to end we will see the progress of amplification of dna strands so this is the importance of this real time pcr that you can manipulate the pcr you can save your time if the products are not there so from the initial point you can save your time and you can also view the amplification in the real time so the principle of this real time pcr the principle is simple here we just use a fluorescence emitted probe which will give the fluorescence means light in simple word you can say light so as the pcr will proceed you will get the light if you do not get the light it means there is no pcr means pcr is not working or the dna strands are not amplifying but if you get the light or fluorescence so it indicate that now the strand amplification is in progress so this is the basic principle and how you can see this fluorescence so it will be clear in the mechanism or in the procedure of real time pcr and as i told in the real time pcr machines we can visibly see the progress of reaction in real time so generally we use this method for measuring the change in gene expression now here the procedure of real time pcr as well as the principle will be clear to you through animated way so just see carefully what we will do in the real time pcr so suppose this is the target dna which you want to amplify and this is the forward primer this is the reverse primer as you know we use the two types of primer in the pcr one is forward and other is reverse but how will you go for the real time pcr so for this we add here a molecule which have reporter at one end and quencher at the other end so what are these reporter and quencher molecules so this quencher means it will inhibit the fluorescence of this reporter molecule means this reporter molecule if this reporter molecule is free it is not bound to quencher so it will flourish means it will produce the light but if it is bounded with this quencher molecule so this quencher molecule will inhibit its power to give the fluorescence or power to produce the light so how we make the use of this property in the real time pcr so first we go for the strand displacement means as the strand displacement means as the new strand is formed from the primer like you can clearly see through this red arrows here the again two primer forward and reverse and this is we add the this quencher and the probe molecule this reporter molecule and here as the strand displays as you can clearly see by this red arrows as means the the new strand is displacing toward this probe so what will happen due to the formation of new strand or the displacement of new strand it will cleave the bonding between this reporter and quencher how as you can clearly see here what will happen in the cleavage as the strand displays now it just break the bonding between this reporter and quencher and as the reporter is now free from this quencher so it will 
now produce light or it will give the fluorescence which will be the indication that the amplification is going on because as the strand is displacing that displaced strand is breaking the bonding between reporter and quencher if there is no strand displacement so it means there will be no breakage of bonding between reporter and quencher so only the strand displacement can break this bonding so if you will get the fluorescence it means strand has been displacing means new strand has been synthesizing or you can say the pcr is in progress because you are getting the fluorescence or light you are getting my point means the indication the fluorescence is itself the indication that the strand the new strand has been synthesizing or new strand has been displacing after that the polymerization will be completed and you will get the fluorescence throughout this pcr reaction means as the new strand it will synthesize till the end of the dna strand fragment you will get the fluorescence because you your displaced strand or your newly synthesized strand just break the bonding between the quencher and reporter so as the reporter is free so you will get the fluorescence so by this real time pcr you can monitor this fluorescence the light coming from the you can say it's mixture so the idea about the progress will be given by the fluorescence intensity or the fluorescence power of this reporter so by these steps you can visualize your pcr product in the real time by using a specific instrument that is real time pcr which has this fluorescence detection mechanism attached with itself so that it can give you the progress of the pcr in the real time so this is the real time pcr now as you clear about all types of pcr like nested multiplex real time reverse transcriptase and others so these are very important types of pcr and simply you can get idea about them by just their name as i just explained you so hope this lecture will be definitely going to help you so this is all about the types of pcr guys see you in the next video till then thank you very much